Just fucking do it. Subscribe now. Until Sally threw a bunch of my old underwear, I used to have underwear older than that. She says, Dan, you know, the underwear is not supposed to separate, you know, the elastic from the uh, material when you wear it too long. And then, well, it still, it still holds my balls and everything. I mean, what's it, you know? Then one day, the drawer's empty. What the fuck? Anyway, so that's, they all pretty much look alike. And, uh, and in those three cases, they're all knocking it out of the park. It's not by accident. We didn't show you, although we showed you some old time guys, not old time, but 90s. But they, and, uh, but these guys are, are, are already had short hair. We didn't have to fit, tart them up. But the other ones with the, you saw the pictures of, we had a tart up. And, and, and in some cases, I had to convince that, believe me, looking like that won't, that dog won't hunt. But when you've looked that way, you know, since you're maybe 15 years old and now you're 35, you know, it's, uh, it was difficult. It was like I was cutting their arms off, you know, uh, to get them to not look that way. Of course, now, now, well, well fuck, you know, well, that was, I was going through a period or a, a, a period of my life anyway. Now, so he's done, um, um, Andreas is, uh, should we should have 10 deals under our belt by the end of this month. Uh, and he, I mean, he's, I mean, he's like going at 300% speed now because since his last day at work was September, end of September. So he's at October, November, and a little bit of December, and he's just cranking through it. I mean, just cranking through. And you heard how uh, he's financed this. The bank never met him. Although he, he read the, the uh, scene, and I wasn't there, so I can't tell you. He read the the data or the information he was getting right that and this uh, at least one of the sellers wanted to you know he's turning over his baby he wants to meet somebody and the lawyers and the accountants uh, you know by by mandate from their big company uh, couldn't go so he went he bit the bullet as I think he he pointed out and uh, he said as they're all gonna say it's no different and contrary to what you think and right now the owners are coming up for breath because they've had their head buried and now he's just going, I don't mean that way, flopping their head off, but I mean flopping their head off. Uh, any questions about Andreas? Uh, now, that, that other quick question guy, remember the, every seminar's got a quick question guy. Go ahead with that introduction. All right, no more quick questions. Um, he had mentioned shared deals. I'm guessing that's the 80-20 split, 60-40 split. They vary. He had one 70-30 split. He, never, he hasn't done a 60-40 yet. It's either 100% owner finance or 70-80, 20-30. And it, it's based on the cash flow. And the cash flow, the... Um, um, and then I, I won't say it's impossible to get a home health that doesn't cash flow because then one of you will prove me wrong. But I mean, it's, it's pretty tough because the margins are fucking big. And that's why I want you to go up to 20 to 40 percent margins, guys. I mean, believe me, I, uh, we've experimented. We've done all the permutations. Uh, bless you. We know what works and what doesn't work. Um, and, you know, they're just... They're, you know, they're, they're killing it. I mean, uh, this time next year, um, he should have uh, 25, maybe more, because he's a hard worker, you know. Now, all these guys, it's, it's not, remember, I've never seen a part-time, high-performance person. He was working two full-time jobs. Now he's not. But all these guys are worker bees. We're not getting any... You know, slappy happy. Now we've got some slappy happy guys, but they're not doing, being anywhere near as successful. They've done, you know, two deals in three years. We're not showing to them. We could, but we're not for all the obvious reasons. But these guys are worker bees. They're hungry. You can be a worker bee at 55 if you're hungry. Or you can be a lazy asshole at 25 if you're not hungry. 
But these kids are hungry. And of course, now they've tasted success. Fuck, you can't. I mean, it just, I remember that. I can't feel it anymore, but I remember. You know, the dementia hasn't killed, the, you know, I can remember what it was like. Could, couldn't wait to get up out of the, in the morning. Couldn't wait to get to see the first uh, prospect, you know. Couldn't wait to go and jump on the bank and slap them around, you know. I, I remember those days. And these kids are, are doing it. And they're doing it all over the world. With the exception of Russia and Ukraine. And, I mean, uh, Nigeria, Ethiopia, and a few of the, those countries. It's easy peasy. And, but they're getting them done in those countries. But it's, it's a tough sled. I mean, it is. It's a tough sled. But they're still getting it done. Any, any, uh, anything else about uh, Andreas or uh, the... Oh, yes, sir. Yeah, he mentioned share deals and that they have a risk, some risk involved, but he, did, he didn't explain why. Um, As opposed well, the risk is involved because you're buying past, current, and future liabilities. And almost always, it has to do with tax. Not always, but for example, not in this job, but when you're, uh, let's say you're buying uh, gas stations. Environmental, past, present. We, um, uh, we did a, a deal in upstate New York a few years ago. And uh, the last time there was a gas pump there was 1911. But you got to have a, uh, whatever the phase one's called, environment. Okay. Well, phase one found shit. And phase one is nothing and costs pretty chicken shit. But phase two, yeah, yeah. And so the lady got tired after four and a half months. And then uh, she said, no, I'm just going to take it off the market. I don't want to go through this shit anymore. And our boy, you, well, we can close this by tomorrow. Her little old eyes, little old lady grandmother says, well, how's that? Well, we'll do a 100% um, seller finance. And, and then she said, out of her little gray-haired lips, you mean then fuck the banks? Absolutely. Dale's done by Monday. This was a Thursday. Boom. Of course, now he's got, the you has got, and if, in his logic, and I, I didn't disagree with him, if it, nothing's happened since 1911, and, you know, so, but you're, you're buying those liabilities. You're buying those liabilities. That's what he meant with a share deal. Yes, sir. If you do like seller finance, um, when the company doesn't cash flow as much as it should be, like in the numbers, you can just like um, renegotiate, pay or stop paying. Well, and no, no. Then you have, you, you have a, a serious conversation with the seller. But that's why when, when the opening gauntlet should be uh, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, you know, we're in era Corona and uh, the second wave is here. Uh, the, uh, you know, we may have a third and fourth wave, no matter you, you, the best projections or the best, your, your, your best guesstimate is that it's not likely uh, that the cash flow is going to be the same. And in fact, uh, you know, uh, the, in this industry, the assets are worth, assets they were worth on March 1, Whatever that valuation, March 1 last year, they're less uh, in value between 25 and 50%. And that's the absolute truth. There's no lie there. Not even an exaggeration. It's really more than 25 to 50. But if you, tell, if you say, then I add, but they don't, the kids don't, and it could be worth nothing. That scares them too much. But see, I say that because I'm setting them up for them to pay me to take the business. But... The kid, when they're, I mean, when you're, when you're just about to get your willy in, you don't tell them that, you know, uh, you had AIDS. And you don't have AIDS, you have AIDS, okay? Uh, apparently, they're there forever, right? Okay. So, then when it doesn't cash flow, and some of the guys do structured purchase uh, deals. In other words, if it does, uh, if it does what you say it's going to do, then you get paid this, but for every 25% that it doesn't measure up to that, the purchase price is less. That's too much work. And I know it's not going to produce that. So would you just go back and say, let's, 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 let's do this based on uh, today's value. Now, right now, I look, the only numbers I look at are from April 1 to now we've got November 1. 
it has, has, has had, the business has had some time to recoup. If it's going to recoup, right? If it hasn't recouped by November, now forget the second wave, the fucking thing's not coming back. Back when we were buying businesses early, when you looked at the numbers from April till June, they said, oh, my business is going to come back. You couldn't find a seller that didn't argue, well, I mean, you haven't given enough time to recoup. Well, now we have given enough time. So those, th th that's the basis of our offer. Those, those, and then you annualize them, 12 months. Uh, and, uh, the, uh, and it's going to be down between 20 and 50% revenue. Now, depending on their expenses and depending on how they, they amortize and depreciate their assets, the cash flow may not be down as much as revenue. But, but the, don't worry about that. You're just saying 25 to 50%, and you won't be lying. You just won't be. Now, when, and people uh, took heart that in America and in Britain and many foreign countries, they were, you, they were getting money through October or so from the government. Well, that money's not coming now. So you got your stranglehold on them is increased. Now, there may be some more government money coming out, but it's going to be at a lesser rate than the first tranche came out, apparently. It looks that way. And they tried, not successfully, to get you to buy the businesses based on annualizing the government money. Well, even you, before you got here, are smart enough to know that, that, well, you can't base a purchase price on government subsidized money that may not have, have another subsid subsidization. Um, but buying the businesses now, we're buying them, roughly speaking, remember I said it used to be three to five times EBITDA, now we're buying them two-ish to three and a half, four times EBITDA. And and you can legitimately say with your hand on your heart, this is all the banks will do and this is all I can do. But they have a, 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 fantasy, a fantasy that you have a, a checkbook that you can just write a check for 100% cash and buy this piece of shit. They, they think that, and they got that bad idea because that's what private equity firms do. And private equity is an equity. It is, they're drawing down on a line of credit. They're drawing down on an overdraft that they have to pay interest on. There is no equity in a private equity firm. It was a misnomer that they called them that 50 years ago, and they're still calling them that. And then on top of that, when you're in business, uh, uh, you, you buy, you sell either a portion or all of your business to a private equity, 99% of the time, you're paying that fucking interest in one form or another. But I mean, again, now's the time. And especially you guys leaving here in a couple of days can put a board together in a week and do a 100% seller finance one or two deals before the year ends. Easy peasy. abso fucking -lutely. But you got to hustle. You got to get out there and beat the fucking bush. Um, I forget who. Um, one of the kids, uh, I got an email. Uh, there's some place and the, the first time they can meet, Christmas Eve. They're serious. Well, maybe he's not a Christian, but assuming he's a Christian, Christmas Eve. I mean, absolutely serious. I don't even know if it's a he, but it's serious. And normally from about, I don't know when the world starts closing down for the holidays, but certainly before Christmas Eve. But you'll be closing deals between Christmas and New Year's. Questions about... Um, Andreas, I mean, you saw the first one from about a year ago where he was, we just had our first board meeting. We had, we had, uh, um, we issued five LOIs, four of which were voted by the board to pursue. And then he's now, he's closed those four 
and he's closing another four during Corona. During Corona. And I, I can tell you, he said that you should be able to get the professional easier during Corona because they're starving for business, okay? Well, the banks are also starving for business. Uh, and when you, when we are the only model I'm aware of, there may be somebody else I don't know about, aware of that uh, is looking this corona period, especially the year-end corona period, as a buying opportunity. Nobody else is teaching that. It's a, and it truly is a buying opportunity. I mean, it is, you know. And uh, you see how passionate, how excited I get about it when I, when I see this shit, because I know, you know. And I, unfortunately, I also know where the kids are likely to step on their dick. So I just, I just kind of keep my eyes closed and hope that they, they miss that line nine. Uh, I don't tell them where the landmine is because then they'll, oh, is that what it is? Boom. Yeah, question. As far as the 100% seller deals, the rate that you're paying back, is that going to be similar to like basic bank rate? Some of the 100% seller deals have no interest. Okay. Don't you bring it up, idiot. Everybody hear what I just said? Yes, sir. Um, when you say, uh, two questions. When you say roll up, does that mean consolidate? Are these quick questions or? No, these are uh, not. Oh, okay. <laughs> roll up, when you, does that mean consolidating all small firms or does that yeah. mean the purchase of any? No, no, ro ro rolling up fragmented industries is consolidations, buying. Now, you mean not roll them up into one company. Remember, I mean, uh, like he's got a, uh, a holding company. And beneath that holding company are now he's got eight, eight subsidiaries, soon to be 10, that he's bought, purchased. He's purchased one business in each. Mm -hmm. There is a manager for each one of the businesses. In, in seven of the, of the eight cases, it's the former owner. And he's got two sub-managers which are managing each four installations. Um, and I think acquisition one and two or one and three, he's gonna merge together because they're so close to each other. Uh, that's not set in stone, but I think so. Uh, and all the financing is done individually, separately, and is not cross-collateralized. Is not cross-collateralized. In other words, each one is stands on its own two feet. Stands on its own two feet. Uh, and remember, he said, uh, I believe two are seller finance, and the rest are a combination of uh, seller finance and commercial debt. And he put up no money other than in Germany, when you have a GmbH, the government wants you to put working capital in, and you can either put... 2,500 euros for so many years or, or 12,500 twice. He just put 25,000 euros up. So the, the GmbH is, is capitalized. But you don't have to do it in the GmbH. There's something else other than the GmbH. But I mean, uh, any German that's worth his salt wants to run a GmbH. So we got a GmbH. Okay. But he put up the money. Nobody else put up the money. Um, uh, and so, but each one is standing on its own two feet. Now, when you get out to 25, 30, 35 of these, then you look at, well, what can we consolidate? Um, but we're already consolidating vis-a-vis -vis buying equipment, purchasing, you know, shit for each one because you get a reduction on insurance and right. et cetera. Did I answer your first question? Uh, yes. Okay, go ahead. Uh, he said he did the, uh, the first deal, uh, due diligence in-house. Was that because it was the deal was No, because small? it was, was 600000 seven hundred thousand okay. euros, and it also cratered. <laughs> I don't think, uh, our guys are smart. I mean, it didn't crater for that reason. Um, and the due diligence from deal two to deal eight or nine has been done by E&Y, uh, our accountants, and the... Um, but the first deal or so, you know, a million or less, 
are easily done by your boards. They, uh, they could do it in a coma yep. because they've got the experience. Now, some of the big, big guys, now you get, um, who's the black uh, guy that's on Trump's uh, cabinet, health education, the black doctor? Yeah, the uh, gifted hands. Yeah, the guy from Johns Hopkins. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, hands, the surgeon, the surgeon yeah. guy. Okay, well, he hasn't done due diligence since fucking Christ. So some of these guys, when they've been gone a long time, will be apprehensive. Ben Carson. Pardon? Is it Ben Carson? No. Ben, yeah, not yeah. Carson. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, uh, and so uh, it's a legitimate reason. You know, I haven't, I haven't been in the field in 40 years. But other than that, I mean, guys can all oversee due diligence on a small deal. Now, we've got some guys that are doing $5 million, 5 million euro, 5 million pound deals themselves. And that's because the board likes to go in the field. Fine. It's just like I've never had a board meeting in Amsterdam or, or Las Vegas where we didn't have 100% participation by the board. Never. They want a board meeting for all the obvious reasons. You, you couldn't beat them off with a fucking hatchet, you know. And because we were public in Amsterdam, we used to split them up. We used to, every third board meeting would be in Amsterdam. And the boys, the old boys loved it. Now, and you couldn't imagine, you wouldn't think that a, a group that old could get in trouble, but they could. They, and they did, God love them. Uh, they still has enough fire. Like one of them used to say, we don't have fire in our belly now, but we got fire someplace else still. And, uh, but that's when you're making money. Did I answer your second question? Yes. Uh, and then Now you got a third question. Third question, not related to Andreas, but when you're doing cold calls, yep. let's say you do a specific area and you're, you only got 500 business to call. Do you expand your geographical area so you can get to the 1,500, 2,000? Oh, yeah. You've got, you, yeah, well, you've got to. Okay. Well, you don't have to do anything. But yes, the answer is yes. Uh, and then you... Um, one of the kids who's a, a physicist, I remember a couple of years, he, he, uh, he, uh, he had a formula. He wrote, uh, he wrote code that for every uh, 25 miles, you, ex ex you extended the radius from the center. Uh, that's about where he lost me. Extended the radius from the center. He added 14% uh, more businesses. Uh, yeah, but you just keep expanding. Lengthening the radius from where you're traveling from. And, uh, the, uh, yeah, but that's, that's too sophisticated for me. The, uh, anything else about um, Andreas other than it works? You know, it works. And, um, yes, sir. So they're licensed businesses. That's why he um, bought the assets with the company, right? No. There's some of the businesses have licenses i told you yesterday if you get if you go down and i'm not telling you not to because substance abuse is big margin drunk and weed heads trying to cure them is a big margin business okay those licenses and i told you new jersey florida california and a couple others it's a bitch to get germany it's a bitch to get so you're better off from a time point of view, although he said we bought it in January and it didn't get the license till April. That's short term because I, told you, I showed you Tom where he thought it was closed in March and he didn't get the fucking license till the end of December. That's more normal. And even though you know, well, I mean, well, I'll be able to prospect and do my, my you're, you're thinking. I just bought this pig for $4 million and it may not close. And that's a tough notion to shake and not think about. And if it doesn't close, and then you think about all the bad shit that can happen. And so it's, it's and I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's extremely tough to stay focused on the next deal, the next deal, when this deal may tumble. But it, fortunately for them, touch wood, it didn't and it closed. So, but buying licenses when you, or transferring licenses, excuse me, when you're buying assets, it takes a long time. And whereas when you're buying it 
uh, company is just a signature. The license goes from ABC company to DEF company. Now, it shouldn't be that way, but it is. So who am I to argue? Yes, sir. What's the business that he closed 100% finance, uh, owner financed in three weeks? Home health. I mean, you, you, three weeks is slow for that. No, I mean, it's, fuck, you, know, you could do it. I mean, literally, we meet him on Monday. Isn't there a song, Monday? Oh, anyway, you meet him on Monday, and the deal's closed by Wednesday. I actually meet him on Monday morning, close Wednesday night. I wouldn't try closing in 24 hours your first deal because you still got to have the T's crossed and the I's dotted. And I don't want you to, you know, miss something. And it'll make your board fucking like whores in churches. I mean, they're going to, their uh, ass will be puckering up because, you know, that's too fast. A week is already too fast, but you can get it done. But if you ask him, is there any legal reason that we can't close it in 24 hours? And they'll say no. Which is the truth. It's no. I mean, it's, you can, I haven't explained to you yet how you're going to get them to pay money. I haven't forgotten. Okay. A guy from Syria, no less, wants to fuck. Sounds like a drug deal. Money laundering to me already. Uh, anything else about, um, uh, yes, sir, in the back. Yeah. So about the managers that you, uh, hired the <coughs> upper ones and then the ones below, uh, did he use his board for making the hiring decisions? Cause he doesn't know anything about the, that's a good, uh, that's probably the best question you've asked so far. Yes. Um, he asked the owners of the business is for recommendations and he asked the board, the industry experts, not the industry expert that's from the UK, but the industry expert that's from the uh, Germany, uh, for uh, recommendations. He also asked, if I remember correctly, uh, the accountants who that run the uh, healthcare practice for that north, I guess it'd be north uh, eastern Germany. And they interviewed a few, and they hired. Two, and it was you know in the uh, and especially in the Corona era, a lot of people out of you know they may be on furlough now, but they know they're going to be out of work permanently in a matter of weeks. A a another benefit of, of Corona is the employment pool is larger, and getting good people. Now you've heard it from just about everybody. Andreas complained the least. Andres complained the least, but but Andres probably the best manager of, of the people you've talked to too, because he's got it structured. You know, it's like the Maginot Line. He's got this this model, and you know. Anything else? Okay, thank you, YouTube.